Hello everyone, the Instant Camera Guy here and welcome to what will be an unboxing and some form of repair. Uh, this camera was sent in by a client of mine named Andrew. Uh, Andrew has been a very good supporter of the channel since one, he's made a few donations to me because he enjoyed my content and he has sent me some things to be repaired. Now, from memory, I think one of the cameras supplied here is for me to use for parts. So I'm just unboxing this. Uh, very well wrapped, Andrew, I must say. <laughs> Let's see if I can get rid of some of this tape here and liberate the uh, camera from its bubble wrap cocoon. Here we go. And yep. As I was expecting, one SX70 Model 3 uh, to be used to offset cost of repair. Uh, let's see, there's also a note in here as well. I'll just read this. Ah, here we go. It says, greetings from Ohio. Hello, Jake. Andrew here from Northeastern Ohio. Enclosed, as we discussed, you will find one SX-70 Sonar dating back to 1979 and one SX-70 Model 3 for repair credit. Uh, yeah, if I happen to be in the need for spare parts and we come to an agreement before you send stuff, I'm happy to accept uh, cameras to use for spares as partial credit towards uh, payment of my services. Um, he says, I also threw in some extra ribbon cables if his need replacing. Fair warning, I tend to ramble with letters like these. That's all right, Andrew. I ramble a lot too. Uh, he says, before I get into rambling about how I love your channel and your work, here's an itemized list of services. One, the Sonar needs a full CLA. Yep. Uh, two, I need to repair a damaged rear hinge. Yep. I'm, and that's partly what I want to do on this video today. Uh, three, add the rule of third grid, easy. Four, install the SX-70R PCB and include a dongle. Dongles I'm waiting on in terms of shipping. Hopefully I'll have some in a few weeks. Um, five, reskin the camera with black crinkle leather. Yep, easy peasy. Uh, he says that should do it for upgrades. Anything else, let me know. A uh, few example photos. And uh, yeah, basically says that he uh, his journey with Polaroid started when he saw the video that Wade from Dank Pods did. Um, is his name Wade? Is it? I, I, I know the channel Dank Pods. I've, I never actually knew the guy's name. Wade is possibly the most Australian name ever. Um, and honestly, he sounds like a Wade. <laughs> I mean, no disrespect to Dank Pods. Um, I really enjoy his content too. I, I watch him quite regularly. Um, he also has garbage time in the drum channel too. Um, but yeah, he says that cameras have always just been something that uh, he's been interested in, but when he looked into the chemistry and physics of instant photography, uh, he knew he had to try it for himself. Fast forward a few months with his folks at an antique store, just about to head to the counter, and uh, he spots the, the rainbow stripe. Um, Andrew says that he found an old SX-71 step in its original leather case. And uh, yeah, isn't that the story that it all starts from there? Um, and yeah, basically... Uh, yeah, the, the electric eye had some corrosion, photos were underexposed, but yeah, still hooked? Yep, 100%. And, uh, yeah, uh, Andrew, I'm so glad that you've learned so much from my channel. Um, you know, it's, it's sort of what I do. Um, I'm here to put all this information out there because the internet is sort of void of, um, of good Polaroid information. It's, it's one thing I really started to notice the more in-depth I got into doing this repair is just how little good information there is out there. Um, right, so I, I say let's, let's dive into the sonar, hey? Um, I've also found enclosed the Polaroids that Andrew included. Oh, awesome. Hey, I really like that one. That circular flare on the geese is really cool. And, uh, yeah, I'm assuming well, it's summer over here, so it must be winter over there, because, yeah, all the, the leaves are missing on the trees. Um, of course, pickup truck, very American, very Ohio. And, uh, of course, American flag uh, inside the building at WFD. Well, thank you for those, Andrew. I'm going to keep them in my stash of uh, Polaroids that clients have sent me over the years. One day I should really make an album of them. Um, but yeah, here we have 
the SX70 Sonar. Now this is the, the camera that I wanna feature in the video. So this camera is functioning, I believe. Uh, it does work. Obviously, Andrew provided some of those sample photos. Um, it is missing two screws. <laughs> Andrew, do you know what's up with that? Um, the shutter is only held in place with two of the four screws. Um, don't know what that's about. But uh, yeah, apparently this camera has a broken hinge. Aha, yeah, in that corner. So um, this is really what I wanted to feature on today's channel because I've already done a whole stack of videos talking about the SX-70 RPCB and, and how to calibrate it. And, well, not how to calibrate it, but just how to do that conversion. So I don't really want to focus all of my time and attention doing another two hour video, but I do want to focus on this broken rear hinge because this hinge is a problem. Um, it, effectively, there are two plastic hinges at the rear of this, of what they call the top long panel. And the hinges sort of come under and then they attach to pins. And basically it's what keeps that panel in place when it opens and closes. Now on this side, there's a little power switch uh, which basically uh, turns the camera on once you erect the camera. Um, and on the other side, there's a, a corresponding little hinge, um, but that doesn't connect to anything. And I don't know if it's like a weak spot in the molding, but nine times out of 10, when I find a broken hinge panel, it's on this side. And, and I don't know why that's the case. It's just something that I've learned from years of experience. I might have a bias here because I might've just, uh, just through sheer luck, experience that, but I tend to find these hinge pins, when they break, it's often on this side. Now, the truth of the matter, this won't affect functioning of the camera very much while all the body panels are on because this rear panel will kind of hold it in place. So you technically only need one of them for the camera to work. Um, but I am going to try and fix that as good as possible. So uh, what that's going to involve me doing, and it's really going to depend on how much of the switch Oh, how much of the hinge is salvageable? I'm, I may not be able to actually, just, just looking at it. Hmm. Look, I'm gonna do my best. Um, you can super glue these panels together inside the metallic casing of an SX-70 sonar is uh, fiber filled polysulfone. And that plastic bonds insanely well with super glue. So that is one fix that I could that I could do. It might sound like a bit of a dodgy fix gluing it, but honestly, super glue sticks insanely well to the kind of white plastic that is in here. But yeah, fixing that hinge, it's gonna depend on how much of the hinge has survived and where the snap is. Um, usually when I see these hinges snap, it snaps where the actual hinge connects to the body panel. But here it actually seems like it's snapped closer to the pin. And I may not be able to repair that as well. But I think first things first, I've got to undo this thing and I've got to get inside it. Um, the initial plan was to use black crinkle embossed leather. So I'll probably just remove the leather panels. And uh, yeah, basically I think the first part of this video will be me taking this apart and sussing out the hinge. Uh, if that hinge proves to be completely irreparable, um, then I can always swap body panels. So for example, I could probably use the black Model 3 body panel that Andrew provided. There's lots of things that I can do and I'll obviously chat to Andrew about what I can do with that. So uh, hold tight, I'm gonna cut there and we'll come back to probably a de-skinned camera and uh, see what I can do. All right, we are back and we are inside. Now, interesting thing about this camera, it's been repaired in the past. We've got this sticker that's here that says to use SX-70 film on a flash bar and to call the toll-free number in Massachusetts should you have problems. And that typically was found on cameras that had at least been factory refurbished. But the bigger telltale sign, the adhesive after I took the leather off is usually uh, on an SX-70 sonar, they change the adhesive and it leaves behind this kind of crusty yellow glue. Well, all the body panels, including the door, have that adhesive residue left on them. However, the bottom panel used SLR 680 style adhesive, which looks completely different. It's kind of this clear color. It is very difficult to remove. And generally the bottom leather panels 
don't look particularly salvageable. They often get quite crinkled and messed up when you try and remove these. So I am glad that we're going to be reskinning this camera anyway. Um, I'm going to take off the two remaining screws. Uh, as it happens, Andrew is actually live on Instagram right now and is messaging me. So I do have the, the ability to ask him questions. Um, Andrew uh, cleaned the electric eye on this camera himself. And so he made a screwdriver to, because you need a special screwdriver bit for these cameras. So he made one in order to remove the screws and apparently kind of destroyed two of the screws in the process. So that is fine. Uh, there has definitely been some soldering work done on the main ribbon cable on the side. Uh, so maybe that was the previous repairer? I'm not sure. But I've got to take the shutter off. Yeah, the ribbon cable, <laughs> the attachments to it don't look great. Uh, as for why that's the case, it's so hard to know. You know, this thing was factory repaired. Um, it's certainly got like some capped on tape over the, uh, I'm hoping the camera's in focus, uh, over the sonar connections, which is good to insulate them. Uh, but this ribbon cable, oh boy, quite messy. I don't know. I'm going to try and get the light here so this thing can really focus. Uh, yeah, these, is that glue? <laughs> um, flux residue maybe? Yeah, this ribbon cable certainly was not soldered on the best that I've ever seen. Um, it actually, it might be a good idea. Oh, and that one's broken. Okay, yeah. All right, so I'm gonna have a bit of work cut out for me here in terms of the shutter, but that's not the intent of the video today. The intent is actually to look at this hinge. Now, I'm gonna need to get the uh, rest of the body panels off in order to really assess that. And as I was saying before, I think what's happened is the hinge has, usually it splits at the location where the actual uh, lug for the hinge meets the body of the camera. But here it's actually split more like where the pin goes through. So depending on, I guess, how much uh, meat, so to speak, is left on the, on the lug, I may be able to fix it or I may have to swap the entire long panel. I'm, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna have a hard time knowing until I get everything off. Um, so now we've got to take out the two screws. One here. One here. here and that one I don't need to because it's gonna just fall off but I'll try and show you guys exactly what I'm talking about here uh, let's just push the erection arm out put that here get my special screwdriver and pop goes one side and the other side we'll do just with the straight pick and then we can flip that over. And here we can see where the hinge is broken off. So see on this side, it's got this little plastic lug with a little uh, switch there. Here is where it's fallen off and here is where the rest of it has remained inside the body. <laughs> um, I think I found one of your spare screws, Andrew. <laughs> it fell like into the gear train assembly. What the heck? Um, yeah, found it. <laughs> that one's totally rounded out. Um, what is going on with this thing? Oh my lord. Dear, oh dear. All right. Um, <laughs> this is excellent content. Okay. I need to remove that lug and here. Okay, this is what is left of the little lug that holds the pin on. Uh, and it's in pretty sorry condition. Now there might, there might be enough for me to attach and send a shaft through. So yeah, actually th that is that is what I'm gonna do. So I should be able to repair this. I'm gonna certainly give it a red hot go, but how I'm gonna repair this is 
I'm going to use a very, very small PCB drill bit, which is 0.75 mil. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to drill down and put a shaft, right? I'm going to, on a diagonal, I'm going to drill down, put a shaft. Uh, probably what I'll do first is super glue this to the base of the panel, right? Then I'm going to use a PCB drill bit to basically drill a long shaft. And what I'll either do, I'll probably then take the drill bit out and then I've got one of two options. Because these PCB drill bits that I'm referring to, they're pretty cheap. You can buy them in bulk from eBay. They're very, very small. So the shaft is made of high tensile steel, um, which is a little bit uh, like, like you can snap it if you, if you, if you really want to. Um, so what I can either do is drill a hole using that, then enlarge the hole slightly, put a screw down there to hold the two halves together. Uh, and then that combined with a super glue will, will do a really, really strong hold. Or I can drill into it, pull the drill bit out, fill that hole with super glue, put the drill bit back in and snap the head off, basically leaving a steel shaft in there and the glue. And that would be a very, very permanent fix. I mean, it's very unlikely to come off after doing that. But what I'm gonna do is glue it all together first so that it's all at least roughly held in place. And then I can make the structural support. So it's basically gonna be steel reinforced plastic by the time I'm through with it. And there should be, yeah, there should be just enough meat left on this hinge for me to do that. So uh, I think what I'm gonna do is, I'll get out my little tubes of super glue. So that's what this uh, spike was doing out before. I'm going to just open up the hole and I'm just gonna, what I like to do, I like to just pour the glue out onto the cardboard here. And then I can just use a pick or something metal to actually just brush it onto the areas. Cause the last thing you wanna be doing is like squeezing super glue all over what you're trying to fix. Cause it'll go everywhere. And super glue is notoriously messy and hard to work with because it dries so quickly. Uh, I'll put a little bit on the side that we're going to attach as well. So yeah, I find brushing it on like with a little metallic pick, like what I'm doing, usually works really, really well. Because you don't want to use too much, really. Um, but yeah, body panel repair like this is certainly one of the uh, best ways uh, to use super glue. It's one of the few areas on the SX-70 where I will use super glue. And we basically just got to hold it in position. And like I said, the fiber filled polysulfone does generally do a pretty darn good job of binding to super glue. So I'm hopeful that it'll hold. If not, I'll have to do it in the reverse order and uh, drill the shaft in first and then secure it with glue. But just so that I get the angle correct, I want the glue to at least hold it there very roughly. And then there's another little bit that's coming off. This may not be possible. I might have to, um, yeah, I might have to do the shaft first. Or it may just be a lost cause. As I said, it usually doesn't break at this location. It breaks further down. And I'm wondering where I found that screw that had come loose was exactly where the hinge pin sits. I wonder if the screw worked its way up in there and shutting the camera closed pressed like the screw into the plastic and that's what snapped it. It's entirely possible that was the reason why. But it's very hard to know for sure. All right, the super glue is slowly setting. I'm gonna give it a bit of a hand with some heat. Oh man, that makes lovely fumes when you do that. All right. Um, yeah, that looks like it's gonna be setting in nicely.
So I'm going to let that dry. I'll probably reinforce it with a bit more glue and then I'm going to just by hand use that little PCB drill bit and see if I can make a hole to form a shaft. And then what I can do, once I've got that hole in place, I could even use like a spare SX70 hinge pin, like what holds the uh, the viewfinder on, because this is knurled at one end, it'll it'll go in all the way and uh, and provide just a good secure shaft so that that hinge pin doesn't doesn't break. And any pin that sticks up from the top, I can then file back. And by the time you cover that in leather, you'll never, never know that it was ever repaired. So I'm going to cut here and hopefully come back with some good news. Well guys, I know when to admit defeat and this top panel is toast. There is just simply no way that I can re-glue this thing on with any kind of, uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? With any kind of reliability because the glue just snaps straight off and there isn't enough, uh, but basically it's broken at the wrong position for me to truly salvage this thing because the shaft of this little uh, hinge lug snapped I just can't salvage it so after having a chat to Andrew we are going to go with plan B which is to use some of the SX-70 Model 3 parts and Frankenstein together a sort of hybrid of colors so the finished result there's, there's one of two possibilities that uh, Andrew and I are going to aim for. Uh, the first will be to have a black rear of the camera with a chrome front of the camera like so, which I think would look pretty cool. Um, I managed to find a spare SLR 680 base panel, so that's going to form the, the basis of the donation. So that's what Andrew is currently deciding on. I thought it would be really cool to go for sort of an alternating checkered panel combination using a Model 3 door, like so. That's how I would, uh, that's what I would like to do. Um, but we'll, we'll see what Andrew comes up with. I told him to sleep on it and tell me which of the two styles he liked them more, uh, he liked the sound of more. And so he's gonna come to that conclusion uh, overnight because it's currently uh, afternoon here in Australia but due to the time zone it is middle of the night over there. So I'm basically going to put all of the parts to the side and we're going to focus on the shutter assembly which uh, has a whole bunch of snap parts on it. Um, I'm basically going to remove this entire PCB. I'm going to open this thing up. Uh, I understand that another technician has already fixed the opto sensor in here. At least I think so. Uh, let me just have a look. Yeah, I, I think that was the story that I was told, which would explain the capped on tape at the top of the uh, where the sonar ribbon connects. Um, the lens is clean. Everything about this shutter is in pretty good condition overall, other than that ribbon cable. And the part that the ribbon cable attaches to is also snapped. So I think what I'm going to do is just remove this ribbon. I'll see if I, I'll see if I can clean it up a little bit. And if I can, uh, I'll reuse it. If not, I'll give Andrew a different one. Uh, I think this all should be salvageable. Let me just uh, bend all the little legs back over. Yeah, I think this is salvageable. Uh, 
put this down here. I thought that um, some of the pins here on the legs were going to be missing, but I think they are all here. It's just that they've been covered in like bad quality solder. Yeah. Okay, so this ribbon cable I can salvage, so that's good to know. I thought I was going to need to replace this, but uh, it is going to be just fine. What I will do is just wick off some of the old solder that's on here because I can tell it's sort of like a tin solder, uh, which isn't ideal for old electronics. Yeah, okay, so this ribbon cable is in far better condition than I thought it was going to be in, which is nice. Great, well that's one part I can salvage. Uh, we'll pop that here. Um, now I must say that this kind of modification is something that I enjoy doing. When, when I have clients send me stuff that is sort of beyond repair, um, I like customizing and Frankensteining together various different bits and pieces in order to make something that works yeah, you know, really well and is a little bit unique. Um, it's not my intention often to do like custom builds for clients, but as you guys might have seen from the uh, SLR 690 build that I did, um, it, it is nice to do every now and again. Wow. Okay, so Andrew warned me that one of the things that happened with his shutter is the blades would often catch. Uh, I have found the reason for that. The secondary spring has come off the solenoid, uh, which is actually probably a good opportunity to talk about what that secondary spring actually does. Because um, I only just figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, on an original uh, SX70 solenoid, uh, the solenoid has four pins, like on a on a Model One shutter. I'm going to see if I've uh, got one here. I'm sure I did. Hang on. Here we go. Yeah, this is a Model One shutter, and the solenoid has four pins. And basically, two of those extra pins engage a switch. And what that does is it effectively turns the PCB into a low power mode. And you'll find that in early models because they had to, out of necessity, have a low power mode for the PCBs because the battery technology back in 1972 just wasn't particularly good. So they were constantly running into uh, errors with the boards running and, and jamming and that kind of stuff. So they made the four pin solenoid uh, so that the board could wor work more efficiently and they wouldn't have those troubles. Now, that switch that gets engaged, gets engaged right after the shutter is closed. So basically once the shutter reaches its maximum point of being closed, so uh, no, well, once the aperture, I mean, reaches its maximum point of getting closed, the shutter can continue to travel, but it's, it's completely closed. It's not going to let any, any more light in. So um, basically, you want those blades to close at the exact very same time as that switch gets engaged. Um, but on an Alpha or a Sonar, obviously you only have two pins because uh, you don't need that extra switch. So what that little secondary spring does is it's a dummy. It adds the same amount of resistance to the solenoid as having that secondary switch would. So that's that's basically what it's there for. I thought that was really interesting. Um, this post has been glued on as well. Uh, Andrew, was that you? I'm not gonna touch it because it's it's intact. Uh, so I'm just gonna leave it. <laughs> but the, the more I dig around on this camera, the more I'm like, what's going on here? I also wonder if like this PCB at some stage was originally found on an SX70 Alpha because it has solder points on the flash fire assembly where you'd expect them to be on an SX70 Alpha. So this is all very interesting. Um, yeah, Andrew, you certainly sent me an interesting little camera here, that's for sure. Uh, I'm not sure if it's interesting in all the right ways, but it's certainly interesting. Next thing I'm going to do is desolder all the points on the rear of the PCB. So everything has to be removed. Uh, I'm just going to grab my wick here. I'm going to need to run to the shops and get more wick eventually. I'm down to like my last two rolls. 
And what I want to do is completely remove all solder from this ribbon cable. Great, and just continue to do the rest. All right, so I'm just taking off uh, solenoid two legs. Uh, next, I'll take off a secondary solenoid two leg. Now to take off the main shutter switch. Bend that leg off. Bend off the leg for the autofocus. And then I just have to take the main solenoid legs off. Of course, I'll be reusing that solenoid once I've taken it apart and rebuilt it. My lord. Come on. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Now this very tired old PCB is going to go. Now, interestingly enough, the original factory plastic lug is intact here, so I wonder if this camera was made with a, a recycled PCB. When the sonars were released, uh, Quite often, like Polaroid, if they had issues with cameras or warranty returns, would recycle components because it was simply cheaper than uh, using new ones. So I wonder if at some stage this PCB was like fitted. Come on. Man, these solenoid legs are really tight on there. Yeah, I wonder if this PCB was fitted to an Alpha at some stage in its past life, given those solder points up here. I have no idea because, well, it's actually missing a solder point here. So I don't know, was that done in the factory? It's a real mystery. Oh my Lord, get off here. Come on, here we go. Yay take this PCB off, nail it to a frisbee and throw it over a rainbow because we ain't gonna need it anymore. Put that over to the side. Uh, but yeah, everything else looks really clean. I'm gonna take out the solenoids and I'm also gonna take out the uh, shutter blades as well. So I'm gonna focus the lens forward for that. And oh, I'll show you guys what I was talking about, by the way. Let's get the, the full lamp here. Hello, camera focus, there we go. So the spring sits around here, right? That secondary spring. And basically what you want, you want those shutter blades to completely close as that little green arm of the solenoid, as that little green uh, plastic part, as that touches the spring. That's what you want. Now, currently the spring's flopping around inside there. Uh, so what can happen if the spring gets pushed upwards, it gets caught in the other, in the top spring and it all binds up, which is not good. It's not what you want at all. Um, so yeah, basically I got to take this solenoid out. I, I might as well completely take the thing apart and flush it from the inside out. And I'm going to clean the uh, aperture blades as well. So we'll do that now and then I'll go grab a fresh PCB. I'll make sure the freshest firmware is on there 
and uh, we will install it. Now, I've got to get the little scissor arm out uh, to take the blades out. Normally I fish the blades out, but on an SX-70 sonar it's really difficult because they bulked up the little idler wheel where it uh, attaches to the body. This is very, very difficult to do. Um, so I take the little scissor arm out. Now when you do that, it's very important that you push down on the brass post, right? Because there's a little brass post where the scissor arm attaches. If you just try pop the scissor arm off that brass post, the post, which is only crimped into the back of this plastic, the post can sometimes come with it. And if that happens, you've just destroyed the shutter housing. So you have to press down on that brass post with as much force as you push up on the scissor arm, and then it comes out. Now ask me, how do I know that that can happen? <laughs> ask me, Jake, how do you know that that post is gonna come off? Oh, trust me. When it's happened to you, you know about it, and you never let that happen ever again. So, there are the blades. They're covered in like a waxy substance at the moment. I have found this substance can sometimes produce inconsistencies in the shutter. This one feels honestly pretty smooth. I'm gonna get rid of it anyway because I had a lot of trouble with a client's camera a few weeks ago uh, and it turned out to be, um, turned out to be the waxiness on the blades was in very, very rough condition. So I've just got my acetone out here. Now, since this isn't paint, I'm happy to do it just on the workshop bench. And just, yeah, get rid of all that wax. There we go. And the other one. Put that off to the side. Put the lid on that because it stinks. And now I'll just get a bit of alcohol and just clean any other residue off the blades. And then we'll give it the old pencil treatment. Jake's patented technique for the world's cheapest dry lubricant. <laughs> Honestly, I'm quite amazed at how well the graphite pencil trick works. Uh, with that said, I do need to find where I put my pencil. Where did I put it? It might be in the other room. Uh, here's one that'll work. I had a blue pencil I was using earlier and I, I filed it into a shape to make it a bit easier, but that's fine. This one will do the job. Any pencil is fine, provided it's a graphite pencil. And the reason that I do this, I always color in the rear of the blades just to help them slide a little bit because pencil is basically graphite. Graphite is a type of dry lubricant and this I find is just a little more consistent. It's certainly better than the anti-static layer that Polaroid put on Model 1 cameras, uh, but on a, like I said, on a, on a sonar and on an alpha, the blades are typically fine, but I have encountered issues in the past where because the blades got moist or, or something along those lines, uh, the wax kind of accumulated in different parts of the blades more than in others, and it made the speed at which the blades traveled a little inconsistent. So I always just do this now, just to be on the safe side. Yeah, it doesn't take long. Um, really doesn't take long to do, so I'm happy to do it. It would be a different story if it added like an hour to the build, but it only adds a few seconds. One final pass, and yeah, those blades can now go back in. Uh, where'd the shutter housing go? Here it is. Now the pin to the top goes on the bottom, so that is the one you want to insert in first. So I'm just gonna do that. 
and this is certainly a lot easier with the solenoid out. I like to have that blade go all the way home, then very gently get the second blade in. There we go. There we go. Go in. There you go. All right. Now we can put the solenoid in. Oh, actually, what am I talking about? No, we can't do that. I got to take this thing apart. So it's a matter of, come on. Usually my fingers are strong enough to do this, but sometimes, sometimes the post gets quite grippy. There we go. So we've got one spring, the piston, the secondary spring. I'm just gonna off camera use a bunch of contact cleaner just to make sure there's no dust or anything like that uh, on the inside of where the piston goes. And since I'll be adjusting this solenoid anyway to calibrate the SX70R PCB, I'll also take out the solenoid adjustment screw. Now this is the most in-depth I've actually gone into tearing down a solenoid on this channel. Basically that screw is to control pneumatic resistance of the piston. Um, so think about it like, if you've ever played with like a syringe of some kind, like th these are what I use for oiling. Um, but you might've noticed like if you take the needle off a syringe and you like put your finger over the tip and try to pull the plunger, you'll feel the syringe like sucking on your finger basically. Uh, well, th this works in the same way. Like as that piston moves within the solenoid, the more air you prevent from being able to escape, the more slowly that blade's gonna travel. If that hole is completely open, the piston can go very, very fast. So that screw is in there to precisely adjust the speed at which the blades are allowed to travel. So it basically controls how fast those blades can move past one another. That's what that screw is there for. Very early SX-70s, like the very first few months of production, uh, did not have that. Oh, I'm an idiot, I forgot the secondary spring. Um, yeah, they didn't have that and they're just kind of calibrated to one speed. So they're a lot more annoying if you've got shutter issues on a very early camera. Uh, there we go. Put all those bits down. So what I'm doing, I'm mounting the spring to its post, which is how it should have been sitting inside the camera. There we go. So the secondary spring is now engaged and it's not flopping around. So now it's gonna sit there as it should. Uh, now I need to put the scissor arm in, uh, making sure to get it on the brass pins, uh, making sure the flash cam lug on the scissor arm is in the right position. And to get this back in, it's just a matter of making sure the brass pins end up in the little oval shaped slots. And when they're in, click it down. And now you've got blades that open and close. All right, last thing I'll do, I'll just loosely kind of fit the solenoid to where it needs to be. Um, I will be changing the position of this when I calibrate the SX-70R PCB. Um, actually, no, I can, I can actually calibrate this. I'll show you guys what I was talking about. So basically what I wanna do, I wanna very lightly Oh, it's actually in the perfect position right now, pretty much. Yeah, basically, as I close that shutter, before that secondary spring gets engaged, I want that shutter to be closed, right? So closing, 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 a little pinhole of light and completely closed, and then it hits the spring. So yeah, that solenoid is, has, has basically just fallen completely into place. I'll just confirm that before I tighten it up. Yep, boom, great. Well, that was easy. <laughs> Nothing like getting it first time's the charm, hey? 
I'll just tighten that up. I'll triple check one more time. Yeah. Now, truthfully, solenoid positioning in that kind of accuracy, it's only really necessary on manual settings. And because we're gonna upgrade this thing to have the SX70 RPCB, we wanna make sure that that is nice and consistent. Um, if you're just using automatic, the shutter only closes again, like when it opens to do the exposure, it'll only close once it's had enough light in. So regardless of the positioning of the solenoid, it's always gonna close at the same time. Um, but for manual modes where there's specific timings, you really wanna control how far those blades are moving. So that's why this, the positioning there that I just did is so important. All right, I'm gonna cut and come back with the new PCB and we'll solder it on. All right here with the new PCB, which I'm going to install, uh, assuming all the pins line up. Come on, there we go. Oh my lord, just gotta bend a few. Yeah. Make sure that these bits can all go home. Get in there. Get in there. Come on, here we go. Wonderful. All right. Okay. I realized this ribbon cable kind of needs to be pushed in and under the main PCB too. That might have been the last tech that worked on this camera. Pulled a little too tightly on it, so I'm gonna see if I can just uh, push on that ribbon cable and get it back back up and under hopefully here we go Yeah, that's a bit better. Yeah, it's just a little, little bent in the wrong shape. Right, let's fold down the pins, get soldering. And uh, yeah, hopefully I can get a little bit of work done on the body before the day is out, because it's getting later in the day. Uh, I ended up yeah, just wasting a whole bunch of time trying to fix that body. Which is unfortunate, because I have successfully fixed those before, but every other time I've seen them, because I've done it three times now, fixing that hinge, uh, that hinge on the, on the body panel. And uh, every other time that I've seen it, it's been because the entire like plastic lug has come off like the body, like, but this one, it had snapped in the center of the lug, which I'd never seen before. And I think the reason that it snapped was, as I showed you guys in the video, the, um, one of the screws that was supposed to be on the lens board holding the shutter in place, uh, had managed to migrate itself under the gear train cover, right to where that switch was. Uh, sorry, not the switch, right where that hinge was. And I think the force of closing the camera onto that screw was what snapped the hinge. And so that starts to make a lot of sense because as, as I said before, I think a previous technician has actually repaired the opto sensor on this thing for, uh, for Andrew. And that would explain why they didn't pick up that the hinge was broken, because it would have been one of the first things that I noticed. Uh, but that, that all makes total sense, that it probably happened at a later date. Anyway, it's all good. It is what it is. What can you do? These things are difficult little beasts to repair. There's so much nuance involved in fixing them. Now I'm just putting the sonar ribbon cable down. 
trying to get it as flat as I possibly can. Great. Okay. I'm just gonna add some extra solder to those ribbons. And then attach the final ribbon cable. Yeah, looking nice. All right. Attach the ribbon cable, which I thought was ruined, uh, which actually looks fine on second glance. Um, the clip that's supposed to hold it down is missing, so we will have to be very careful uh, if we, like, lift the shutter on and off the camera, because that clip is now missing, but the clip is not like a structural part, it just sort of helps keep the ribbon cable in place. So that's all tacked on. Again, I'm just gonna now melt the solder and push the ribbon cable down, just to keep everything sort of a uniform flatness. <laughs> I'm, doing, I'm doing the best job I can with this somewhat mangled ribbon cable. All right, both ribbons are attached. All other solder points are attached, including the solenoid. Uh, other than putting the light dark wheel back on this thing, uh, as well as the walking arm and the flash cam, this shutter should be pretty much ready to go. It'll just need that little screw and the pneumatics uh, calibrated for the correct shutter speed. Uh, and that means we can pay attention on putting together the rest of the body of the camera. All right. I have the base of the Model 3. I've adapted it to a SX-70 Model 1 lens board, uh, the Model 1 being held in place by little pins instead of rivets. Uh, and that just made the lens board off this camera easier to remove. I've already cleaned the Fresnel and the internal mirror. However, one thing that I have to do is Whilst the camera uh, is stripped down, I might as well just remove the uh, little metal tongue that's inside. Uh, you guys will know by now if you watch my videos what that metal tongue does. It basically prevents you from inserting the wrong type of film. Uh, and if my client Andrew wants to use eye-type film at any stage in the future, having this tongue removed is going to go a long way in terms of making that easy to do. So. I'm just going to file the little lugs down, make sure we blow all the dust away, and then we will fit the new uh, bellows panel, basically, and turn this into a Model 3 slash Sonar uh, hybrid, which I think is going to look really cool. We'll see what Andrew chooses overnight in terms of the body panels. But uh, either way, I think it's going to look awesome. I'll just make sure, pop the mirror up, there we go. Make sure everything is clean inside. It's looking very, very nice. Uh, while I'm here, actually, 
I'll get my little lithium grease and brush and I'll just lube the pick arm like so. And we'll do that again once it goes forwards. Just basically rotating the gears until the mirror goes back down again. We should hear a click very shortly. And I'll just lubricate a little bit of the front sliding portion. Just a tiny touch of grease. This brush is almost dry. That's how, that's how little grease it has on it. But that pick arm is now clicking nicely. And now we can come and install the new bellows panel from the Model 3, uh, which I'll put on just like so. Basically just want to get all those parts down. I want to put the hinge pins in, put the screws in place, and then I can fit the front panel. And then we are pretty much done. The only other thing I have to do is just do some cosmetic stuff. Uh, I've got to remove all the old remains of the adhesive from the model, uh, from the sonar panels that we're going to keep. Um, I'll probably do things like salvage the uh, mirror from that sonar as well, because that mirror is going to be very handy to have as a spare. There we go. Beautiful. Now we'll put these screws in place. I'm just going to push the mirror up first. Great, we'll collapse that down. And we'll just grab the little screws that hold everything in place. That is one. And here's the second one. Just going in like so. Clip, clip go the rear. Bellows clips. Beautiful. Now I just have to attach the lens board, which is a little bit fiddly. I'll collapse that down to do this. go. All right. One very nicely reconditioned lens board installed and put with the nice new black Model 3 panel. Very nice. Camera is nice and easy to open and close, which is a nice little bonus. Um, I'm now going to go off camera, clean up the viewfinder, uh, clean off all of the uh, the gunk from the front door, if I can find where I put it, and uh, yeah, get all these panels looking nice and neat, and uh, yeah, hopefully report back with a camera that is reassembled, with the shutter installed, all the focus wheel and stuff I'll put back on, and uh, yeah, we'll be able to calibrate and uh, show some results. Here I was looking for the door. It was, it was literally sitting right there. What do they say? Sometimes you can't see the forest for the trees. Um, anyway, I will be removing the frog tongue from that so that I can get to the base, base panels. And uh, yeah, let's go and give this thing a good clean. All right. Well, the camera is entirely together. Uh, off camera, I realized that I forgot to add the rule of thirds grid that I promised Andrew, so I took the bellows off and reapplied that. We've got a new bottom base panel that I had from a spare SLR 680 that was uh, destroyed. Uh, we have the spare Model 3 panel from the camera that Andrew provided. Uh, I also installed a brand new Mabuchi motor in there because the old motor, for some reason, when I cleaned the rotor and gave it a test, it then completely seized. So I don't know if that motor had a bad winding uh, or if the 
uh, bearings needed replacing in that motor, but either way, it sounds far better with its new motor installed. And uh, yeah, the camera works really, really, really nicely. Um, sounds incredibly strong. Autofocus works really quickly. The last step is really going to be calibrating the shutter. Now, calibrating the SX70 RPCB has turned into somewhat of a dark art. Uh, the creator, Yongmin, and I have been working tirelessly over the last two weeks or so to figure out every single variable that could possibly come into play when it comes down to the SX70 shutter and calibrating it for manual settings for the new PCB. Um, effectively, Yongmin had originally provided a calibration method based on Polaroid's original technique, which was that the shutter going from completely closed to open position should take a quarter of a second, so about 25 milliseconds, um, I believe. Uh, no, 40 milliseconds. Anyway, I can't remember because I've chosen to delete that from my memory because it's not a useful way of calibrating the shutter. It requires use of a high-speed camera, counting frames per second, and ultimately just straight up didn't work in a whole bunch of cases. <laughs> um, I would have some cameras where I would try and calibrate it using the high-speed camera, and I just could not, for the life of me, get it to work reliably at the given speeds. So I devised my own method based on the minimum focusing distance. Uh, minimum focusing distance. Uh, minimum aperture. So basically when you are using the one eight thousandth of a second, um, using that as a reference, because if the fastest shutter speed works on the S670R, then odds are the rest of the shutter speeds are going to fall in line too. Um, this is still not a perfect solution. Um, I always film test the cameras after completing this calibration uh, in order to make sure that everything is working as it should. But what I'm basically going to do here is I'm going to take the two screws off that I, I was using to hold the shutter in place. Uh, I've got a little alligator clip here that I've soldered a little metal tab to, and I'm going to put that just on the side. That's going to engage the door switch, so what I can now do is insert that pack of film, and the camera is going to remain powered. And that allows me to hold the shutter of the camera over to the side. And basically what I'm going to do, um, on sonar models, when I do the SX70R conversion, if you have very good eyes, uh, a lot of people don't notice, but I add a little hole here for adjusting the solenoid. Now, that hole is very unintrusive. Uh, if I hadn't have no mentioned it, you probably wouldn't have noticed. There's already two holes on the side of the shutter unit here for the remote cable release. Adding the second hole, uh, well, adding the third hole down here provides access to that brass screw uh, to allow for solenoid adjustment. Now, the reason that I do that for sonar cameras is the front housing is harder to take off. If you have a Model 1 SX70, for example, uh, it's pretty easy, especially if I've already serviced the camera, you just lift it off, right? Uh, on a sonar, it's more involved because you've got to take the sonar housing off first, then you've got to take the secondary housing. The sonar housing is a little bit more fiddly to take off, it's a bit, a bit more fiddly to put back on. So I provide a hole there. Now, why I provide the hole is just in case something happens, to the camera, you know, maybe it gets dust in the shutter blades or something like that. Maybe you live very far away from me and you need to calibrate that shutter because all of a sudden it's, you know, stopped exposing correctly. Well, you're going to be able to do so using uh, a 1.6 or a 1.8 millimeter flathead screwdriver. I think this is, does it say? This says 1.5. Yeah, so about a 1.6 millimeter screwdriver we find. Ignore that I said 1.8, it's 1.5. That is the correct, uh, flathead that would adjust the solenoid screw. Do not use anything smaller. Do not use anything bigger. You will absolutely chew, <laughs> chew it to pieces. And you do want a screwdriver that has a good handle on it. Um, if you use one of these kind of jeweler screwdrivers, it's never going to have enough torque to move the solenoid screw. You really want something with a nice meaty handle. So I've got 
one of these screwdrivers with re replaceable bits. And the bit that I keep in here, this is purely my solenoid adjusting screwdriver. I've actually put blue tech in here to permanently hold the bit in so it can never come out because I never use anything else in this screwdriver handle but this bit. And basically what I'm gonna do is using some more blue tech just to keep the camera uh, steady, I am going to basically just set the camera up here. I'm going to move my lamp so that it's behind the shutter. Uh, I'm just going to disable the autofocus by, um, I mean on the sonar you have to do this. You don't need to do this, but I prefer to so it's less distracting. That little copper arm there, if you guys saw my um, SLR 680 overhaul video where I had to re-solder on that little arm, I like to just disable the autofocus, so now when I press the button, it's not going to work. Um, and what I'm going to do is, using this dongle, uh, I'm going to match it to this camera. It should be powered because it's got the little crocodile clip there. Uh, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to set this to 1 8,000th. There we go. And what I'm doing, I'm going to put the lamp, my desk lamp here, behind the shutter and I'm going to get down to eye level here and I'm just going to be observing what kind of a hole, uh, what kind of a shape the aperture blades make. So maybe I'll try get a bit of b-roll of this. I, I don't know if this is really going to come out because uh, I'm not sure if the frames per second on my phone will, uh, let's test it. All right, so I'm going to record here. So you guys might be able to see a little pinpoint of light um, that is way too, uh, way too quick. So I'm just gonna uh, see where is the, where's this crack? So it's like that. And basically, to make the hole at one thousandth of at one eight thousandth of a second larger, you loosen the screw. To make it smaller, you tighten it. So I need to loosen this screw. So. We're going to try that, and we're going to need to loosen it more than that. Ah, that's better. Okay. And what I'm aiming for here is a small little rectangle shape. That should, just get out my phone and do some more B-roll again, so you guys can see my screwdriver, it's going through the hole. Now that is roughly what, uh, I've just got to get the, my phone to synchronize <laughs> with the shutter, because sometimes it's going to look like nothing's firing. Yeah, there you go. Um, that's roughly what the Aperture should look like at one eight thousandth of a second. Um, I, I might have to tweak this a few times just to really dial it in. Um, but yeah, you're basically looking for the very tips of that teardrop shape. That's that's the the amount that you want it to open, and it should look like a little rectangle. You might see a little bit of a triangle shape in the center when you calibrate a sonar, but it should look roughly like that. So I'm going to dial it into that. Then the next thing that I check is you go all the way down to one tenth of a second. Now when you're firing at one tenth here, the aperture is going to be all the way wide open at f8, so I'm just going to confirm. Yep, I confirm that that is in fact happening. And so now this camera is ready for film testing. Now, I may need to do further tweaking because it is very sensitive, like that screw does not need a lot of movement. We're talking like 1 16th of a turn is all you need to make quite a big difference to the solenoid. Um, but yeah, basically that's what I'll be doing. So I actually have to go and buy some film now, give this thing a film test in the afternoon, and uh, yeah, then, then come back and, and report back with some finished results. So basically what I want to do, I want to make sure that Automatic mode outdoors in bright sun looks nice. I want to make sure that the corresponding manual setting to what that bright sun exposure would be also looks nice. So typically bright sun is going to be one two thousandth. Like these shutters go all the way up to one eight thousandth, but you would have to be taking a photo of something insanely bright 
for one eight thousandth to be particularly useful. One four thousand is sort of like a mountaintop with bright snow. One eight thousand is like, I think you'd have to be on the sun. <laughs> um, then I want to take a photo at about one tenth, so my bathroom is perfect for that. Um, it is worth noting that one tenth at f8, that's perfectly doable handheld on an SX70. Um, it's no problems at all, super sharp. Uh, and then I want to take a photo at about a hundredth. So get that range from one two thousandth to hundredth, one tenth of a second. And if it can do all of those, then I consider it calibrated. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm going to do now. A whole bunch of film testing and uh, report back with some results. All right, we have one finished camera. Reskinned in chocolate brown leather. Uh, the reason being that we decided on the chocolate brown is because Polaroid, when they used cameras that had a combination of silver and black body parts, they typically used a dark brown leather, such as the uh, Sonar Sears Special, which had a combination of uh, black and chrome. So I think the dark brown ties together the two color combinations nicely. And most importantly, we have a fully working camera. Everything about it is completely functional. The shutter is completely calibrated. And the only issue that I had uh, was the solenoid that was originally in the camera, which I have here, uh, was very out of spec. Now, I don't entirely know why that's the case. This is something that truthfully, Yong Min and I are still trying to figure out because every now and again, when we do an SX-70R conversion, we end up with cameras that have issues towards the uh, higher speeds. So anything above that sort of effective one two thousandth of a second and upwards. And swapping the solenoid in this case, uh, in this case I actually put in a modified solenoid from a 1972 Fairchild camera of all things, uh, fixed the problem and worked totally fine. So Yongmin and I are still trying to figure out what exactly causes the solenoids to go bad. I have two theories because there's, there's sort of two parts that make up a solenoid. You've got the electrical component, which is the electricity that passes through that copper coil and winding and powers the uh, electromagnet. Um, and then secondly, you've got the physical like piston um, inside the solenoid. So the actual piston that slides into the housing. And I don't know whether it's an issue with the winding, like some of this copper getting corroded, and as a result, those highest, those faster activations are a little more intermittent. Or if it's a physical thing, like through overuse or oxidization, that cylinder just isn't as accurate as what it should be. I'm still trying to figure that out. But at the end of the day, replacing the solenoid ended up doing the trick, and I am happy to announce that we have very accurate metering. So uh, this was on automatic mode, and then this was according to the dongle at one hundredth of a second on manual, both completely identical. Uh, you'll have to forgive the light leak here, I was transferring film from one camera to another. Uh, again, automatic versus the one two thousand, completely identical. Uh, and then I've got a little bathroom selfie taken at manual one tenth. Uh, again, light leak because I was transferring film, but yeah, the flash also completely works. So I'm satisfied with this camera in the end. And one of the things that I was able to actually learn from doing this build, um, you guys, if you've seen my Instagram, will know that over the last week or two, uh, Yongmin and I with the SX-70R project have really been trying to figure out as many variables as possible to rectify so that our shutters can be as accurate and easy to calibrate as possible. Um, because these SX-70 RPCBs, for the most part, work really, really well. But I do find on sort of 25% of the cameras that I've been working on that I do pick up, you know, weird little issues like the solenoid in this particular camera. So we're still trying to figure out why exactly that's the case. I'm just under the hunch that, you know, when you're dealing with cameras that are 50 years old, eventually you're going to come across some dud parts and you're going to need to swap things around to get the best results. Um, but um, in terms of this particular camera now, it is working really nicely. Um, but one of the things I did discover, you might remember that I said I had to uh, take out the motor on this camera. Well, inside 
an alpha spec motor like one of these is a whole bunch of small plastic washers that uh, basically sit on the rotor. They're so small. Uh, and they, they sit on the rotor as it sits inside the bell housing. And they're made of plastic. Well, it turns out that those washers are exactly the same size as the washers on an SX-70 Model 1 that sit underneath the solenoid assembly. Because when you have an SX-70 shutter, there's a little screw at the bottom here, right near where the ribbon cable inserts. And that screw is what holds the solenoid in place. And the hole that the screw fits through is rectangular, so you can actually slide the solenoid backwards and forwards. And on early Model 1 cameras that had the metal housing, they had a little washer there. By the time they started making the plastic parts, Polaroid just decided to delete that washer, probably because it saved, you know, 0 0.0007 cents <laughs> or whatever. Um, and so they deleted it. And that can make positioning the solenoid a little bit more difficult if the plastic becomes indented over time just through to tightening that screw. So having the washer there really allows you to perfectly position that solenoid. And that's what I ended up doing here. And now it works perfectly fine. So yeah, I ended up learning a lot from doing this camera. And I'm very thankful to have the opportunity to restore this for Andrew. Um, I'm gonna get this sent out back home to him, back to Ohio this week where he'll hopefully be able to use it for many years to come. Um, and uh, and yeah, the, the only other thing that's missing is Andrew was after one of the dongles, but I'm just completely out of stock of them at the moment. The only thing that I have uh, belongs to my client, Prash, who's already purchased this from me. So, uh, But when the dongle does arrive, uh, I will obviously get one uh, painted up so that Andrew can install it onto his camera and uh, use that to control all the manual settings as he sees fit. But uh, yeah, until then, um, I might just send it back individually. We'll, we'll, we'll chat and work out the best thing to do. Uh, but yeah, I'm really stoked with how this thing turned out. It's really, really nice looking. It's very unique with those black body panels. Uh, as I said, there's not much that I could do because of that damage in the hinge. Sometimes you can repair it, but in this case, it was a lost cause. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks again to anyone that watches my content. I hope you found this video entertaining uh, and I hope that you enjoyed listening to me waffle on about various difficulties that I had repairing this camera. Um, Andrew, I hope you enjoy the camera for years to come. And as always, if you like what I do and you wanna support the channel, links are below to my little coffee account. Uh, it's not like Patreon where you're encouraged to sign up for you know monthly subscriptions. It's just an as, as you see fit donation, um, it's a, uh, you know, sort of, I, I figured that's the best thing for me to do at the moment. But of course, another way that you can support me is simply by sending me something to repair, uh, because this is pretty much my full-time job now. Uh, so yeah, as always, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Happy shooting. May you have nothing but perfectly exposed photos, and I will see you in the next video.